Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today, we will be looking at the movie The Negotiator. Do take care because there are spoilers ahead. The movie begins with a police negotiation in progress. A man has a young girl pinned to the floor with a gun to her head while another man is outside trying to negotiate her release. His name is Danny Roman and he is an expert hostage negotiator working with the police. His superiors want him to stand down, but he insists on going inside to save the girl. He goes inside and distracts the criminal, allowing the special team to break in and save the girl. Danny shoots the criminal and the mission is complete. Later, Danny hangs out with friends at a bar. They all see on the news that Danny is a hero and they cheer him on. Eventually, he leaves the bar and follows a colleague to his car. The man tells Danny that some money is missing from the disability fund. The embezzled amount totals to about $2 million. They get interrupted and Danny's partner Nate says that they will finish the discussion later. He apparently has something important to disclose. When he gets home, his wife Karen greets him. She is proud of him but maintains that he should not take unnecessary risks while doing his job like he did earlier that day. He gets a message from Nate, but before he can get to him, Nate is shot dead. Just then, the police arrive and it looks really bad for Danny. He tells his superiors Nate's theories and believes it is why he was killed. Unfortunately, they don't believe him. Nate is laid to rest and Danny is there to pay his respects. The following day, the police come knocking at Danny's door. The gun used in killing Nate was found and it has been linked back to Danny. They come in to investigate and an internal affairs investigator named Niebaum is convinced that Danny had a motive to kill Nate because he is the one actually stealing the money. The investigators find a file amongst Danny's things. This file incriminates him but Danny insists that the file has been planted to make him look guilty. Danny is taken to the police station. Try as he might, nobody believes that he is innocent. At some point, Danny runs into Nate's wife, Linda. He tries to plead his case, but she is upset and refuses to believe him. Danny is taken to a meeting with his superiors. They officially asked him to explain how the papers and such a large sum of money got into an offshore account in his name. Danny says he doesn't know anything and his lawyer supports him by saying all the evidence is circumstantial. The man gives Danny one day to make a deal. If Danny admits to the crime and gives up the names of his accomplices, the man will ensure he does not receive the maximum penalty. Outside, the lawyer advises Danny to take the deal, but it looks like Danny has other plans. He tells Karen to go home and kisses her goodbye before leaving. He makes his way to the 19th floor and enters the Internal Affairs Department. He enters Niebaum's office and tries to reason with him. He insists that Nate had reasons to suspect Niebaum himself and wonders how it now looks like he is involved in the crime. Niebaum says that he has nothing to do with it and insists that Danny should leave his office. Danny refuses to leave and a fight ensues between the two of them. Danny pulls out a gun and forces one of the men to lock the door. Niebaum tells Danny to put the gun down but he insists that he won't back down until he gets the answers to his questions. Niebaum sits on the chair as it dawns on him that he is now a hostage of the expert negotiator. Danny briefly takes Niebaum outside the office, showing the other officers what is happening. Later, they go back into Niebaum's office. Danny cuffs the other hostages and makes small talk with them. The woman is Niebaum's assistant and insists that she is not scared of Danny. Outside the station, the police are prepping for the hostage situation and choppers are also on standby circling the building. A special squad exits the chopper and lands on the roof. From there, they make their way to the building. The hostage situation doesn't make headway until nightfall. One member of the special squad begins to descend from the roof. There is also a team of snipers positioned on the roof with orders to take Danny out if they get the chance. The chief in charge of the case knows that this would be a difficult case, so he demands that a negotiator be brought in to handle Danny. Some special agents come in and introduce themselves as FBI agents who can handle the case. The police confirm that the case falls under their jurisdiction since it is a federal building. They eventually come to an agreement to work together. Meanwhile, the police had been passing cameras through the vents to get a visual on Niebaum's office. Danny sees it and goes to cut them off. They finally call Niebaum's office, demanding to talk to Danny. Danny tells one of the hostages to pass on a message to the police. He insists that he would not talk to them and would only talk to a man named Chris Sabian. He gives them 20 minutes to get Chris or he will kill the hostage. 
The scene moves to Chris having a family crisis, and we get to see that he is a smooth talker. Back at the hostage situation, Danny keeps wittingly annoying the authorities. By this time, a lot of reporters had gathered at the scene. There is a lot of tension in Niebaum's office as the hostages begin to argue amongst themselves. In a bold move, Danny communicates into the loudspeaker and informs everyone listening that he is only doing this to find out who stole the money and who killed Nate because he knows it isn't him. Before hanging up, he gives two warnings. First, he informs the police that whoever set him up would try to end it quickly, and if they give in, justice would not be served. Next, he tells them that he knows the rules of engagement, so they should not test him. Chris arrives just in time before Danny kills the first hostage. He gets on the phone with Danny. It turns out that the two negotiators had worked on a case together two years earlier. They both try to get into each other's heads, but Danny insists that his demands are met. He wants his badge to be brought to him, and he also wants Nate's informant to be found because he is the only one who can clear his name. He asserts that the authorities have eight hours to find the informant, or he would kill one hostage every hour. At some point, Chris goes to the 19th floor to meet Danny so they can talk face to face. Chris tries to be objective and wants to find out who the real criminal is, whether it is Danny or not. Danny takes one of the hostages and takes him out to meet with Chris. The two negotiators were going back and forth over the situation when the special squad guys came in and started to shoot. Unfortunately, Danny gets too close to a window, so the snipers on the roof get an opportunity to take him out. He's given the order to do so, but does not take the shot. It looks like Danny's warning that the real bad guys would try to silence him got to his colleagues. The officers in the command room begin to turn on each other. Chris is furious that they took such a route that endangers the lives of the hostages while the supervisors go ahead to defend themselves. Eventually, Danny goes to the edge of the floor and screams at the authorities. This causes another round of arguments as Chris insists that no sniper takes the shot to kill Danny. Chris even had to bring Karen in to calm Danny down. Danny pretends to kill a hostage so that he can be taken more seriously. Believing that the police cannot handle the situation anymore, the FBI arrives in full force. Meanwhile, Niebaum's assistant finally decides to help Danny. She reveals that he stores confidential information on his computer. This leads to incriminating evidence that Nate was not really innocent in the embezzlement case. Chris finally believes that Danny is innocent after discovering he had not really killed the hostage. While the FBI and SWAT raid the building to rescue the hostages, Danny disguises himself as a SWAT member and escapes through the vents. The two negotiators go to Niebaum's house, but they are unable to find the wiretaps that they would need to clear Danny's name. The police arrive, and this includes the corrupt officers. Chris notices that an officer named Frost is discreetly locking the front door and taking out one of the loaded guns. At this point, it is clear that Frost is at the head of the conspiracy, the insider on the disability funds board, and Nate's killer. Chris seemingly kills Roman in front of Frost and offers to destroy the evidence in return for a cut of the money. Frost agrees and this later serves as a full admission to the crimes. When Frost exits the house, he discovers that Chris only wounded Danny and has used a police radio microphone to broadcast his entire confession to the police surrounding the area. Frost attempts to commit suicide but is stopped. He and the other corrupt officers are arrested. Danny is loaded into an ambulance with Karen at his side. The movie ends on a wholesome note as Chris gives Danny his police badge. Do leave a comment telling us your favorite part of the movie. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time, folks, take care and goodbye.